So we have this uh, Willowbrook uh, study. Uh, started in the 1950s. So Willowbrook was an uh, institution for uh, mentally challenged children. Uh, and at that time in the 50s and 60s, when families had a uh, mentally challenged child, the thing to do was to put these um, in individuals in an institution. Uh, however, uh, hepatitis used to be a major problem at Willowbrook because of the un unsanitary conditions uh, that the children lived in, and they're all coming down with um, uh, hep uh, hepatitis. So uh, the uh, institution asked this researcher, uh, Dr. Saul Krugman, uh, to um, investigate and see if you could try to find some kind of vaccine or, or, or drug uh, help with the hepatitis problem. He did a series of research studies, um, uh, proposed one of his research studies was to um, do a control trial using uh, gamma globulin, which he thought would um, uh, protect against the hepatitis virus and he would um, then inject uh, or give hepatitis virus uh, to half, half of the um, children enrolled in the research and the other half would just get placebo or would just get the gamma globulin and, and no hepatitis. Okay. So, so this was a human challenge study uh, similar to what I was talking about previously about the uh, coronavirus. People are considering about a human challenge study there as well. Okay, so um, what do people think about this study? What are the uh, major ethical issues, if there are any major ethical issues? So what would a IRB or a research ethics committee would ask of the investigator about this research? I think it's unethical because um, it's conditioned. So people who participate in this uh, would benefit from the facility. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. It's unethical because of what? It's unethical because it stated that uh, uh, people who participated in this Okay, so I can hear you now. Yes, so, so I think it's it's unethical because it it's like was conditioned that it's people. What? It's what? Uh, because it stated that children to participate in the study often guaranteed acceptance into the overcrowded facility. All right, it's unethical because of what? Because of many points, but the first point is that it stated that the children participating in this study guaranteed acceptance in the overcrowded facility. So this, like... No, no, uh, uh, time out for a second. The, mm -hmm. the um, well, one, the overcrowded facility has nothing to do with the research. Just to make sure we're all on the same page, I mean, mm -hmm. essentially, you have the facility and uh, all the institutionalized children would be in the facility and they're getting hepatitis and the children involved in the research would be in a separate facility that was clean and not exposed to other children with the hepatitis virus. So oh, I think I, I didn't get I didn't get the point. I, I got the point that they they seek uh, accept the facility and this will be guaranteed if they uh, accept the, the permission to be part of the study. Okay, I, I mean, uh, these are children who are proposing. I, I think I, I get to, I think what, what I get what I want to say that it's like blackmailing uh, in order for you to, to get into the facility you have to participate yeah that's what i got well why why is that blackmailing 
because for you to get into the facility, to get a place there, you, you, you have to accept uh, to participate in the study. So if someone doesn't want to participate, you're not allowed to get into the, into the facility. Okay, well, I mean, uh, uh, what's the concern with that? Um, the parents could always say no. Maybe because this is a vulnerable group and the parents uh, would need their children to be accepted in the facility, maybe. Uh, can I say something? Yes. I think that's a violation of the autonomy. They didn't give them the choice for that. They are vulnerable group, but their, their parents needed to have uh, them in the facility, even though the facility was like low in hygiene and everything else. So I think the first thing that has to be said is like, there was violation of this vulnerable group of mentally disabled children, welfare and rights. Well, but they, um, uh, Can I add something? Uh, I mean, the parents could always say no. I mean, the, the institution was full, overcrowded, was unsanitary condition. Uh, but they said to the parents, uh, well, uh, here's the offer. Uh, uh, the facility is closed, but we have a separate facility for research, and it's your choice. If you want your child in this facility, the only openings we have are for research studies, and it's your choice. Take, you know, so this is a pressure point. What's that? So this, this is a pressure point. So either to, yeah. to be in the waiting list for the unsanitary facility or to to participate in the research to be uh, a part of a more clean area or more clean facility. All right, so what's wrong with that? Because if they didn't participate in the studies, they will be denied the, the, the service. They will not get the service. So it's uh, like, the, like, like the penicillin issue in, in, in the syphilis study. They are denied the, the treatment. So I, they are the same. Uh, no, well, first of all, there's no treatment. Uh, it's second of all, the facility was closed. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I add something? Yes, please do, because I'm not understanding mm -hmm. the concern. Okay, <laughs> I think first of all, they, they shouldn't have done this research on impaired children who are mentally impaired and uh, the, due to the circumstances and the conditions of that institution and the environment, the consent form uh, that they presented to the parents are not, I think, valid because it doesn't have the necessary um, um, criteria. It is not voluntary. They are not um, given uh, options, so they have no choice. Oh, wait, because wait, okay, wait, okay. First of all, yeah, you're saying several things. So let's, um, let's take them one by one, okay? Uh, now, I'll, I'll go backwards. The last thing you said was they had no choice. What are you talking about? They had a choice. The parents could say yes or no, right? Yes, the but there's no other mm -hmm. So the parents could say yes or no. Yeah, um, can I because there is no other institution. There is no other I, institution. I, I know, but that's not, I mean, that's not the fault of the researchers. Can I say something, please? Uh, please do, because I'm still not understanding. They the were concern. deceived. What's that? Yeah. They were deceived that, that this deceived. will guarantee. Deceived, yes. What do you mean? How are they deceived? That they said that this will result in vaccination for treating a very important disease, but this disease is not specific to these children, and uh, such experiments shouldn't be done on these children. Oh, okay. Now, when there okay, are healthy so ones. again, um, let's uh, um, so uh, uh, let's let's focus on that point. Okay. Uh, now, the issue about informed consent. I agree with you. The consent form was a little sketchy. Okay. 
and the IRB would say, okay, let's, let's, let's start filling in the blanks and start talking more about the informed consent. Um, all right, done. Uh, uh, parents have a choice. They could say yes or no. Uh, Can I say something? Uh, hold on, let me finish my thought. Um, okay. and, and so, all right, let's fix up the informed consent. I agree 100%. Um, and uh, now, uh, so before I get to the other point, uh, who wanted to say something? Uh, so, so? Yes. Yeah, in the, in the consent, it said that the, this may uh, give to the children immunity against this disease for life. So maybe it was, yeah, really sketchy uh, informed consent, but in the same time, they offered something for the children. Oh, well, yeah, so what's what wrong with that? Uh, nothing, actually, wrong with that. I'm, I'm, I totally agree with Golana and Maha for trying to deceive the parents to agree to sign the informed consent. I, so I they are guaranteed the vulnerable, they are guaranteeing that the vulnerable uh, children will have immunity for life. They didn't mention in the informed consent anything about infecting them from the beginning. They said no attack or mild attack, but they didn't no, explain everything. The, so the informed consent, yeah, virus is introduced. So either no attack or a mild attack. So an IRB may question, how do you know it's going to be a mild attack? Yeah. Okay. This may give immunity for life. May. It's not guaranteeing 100%. Yeah. Now, the IRB may say, well, what, what is the percentage? How many? Uh, and we'll, we'll get immunity. And sometimes you just don't know. Uh, I mean, uh, in the coronavirus uh, vaccine studies, uh, I, I mean, they're not going to be able to uh, um, know how long immunity will last, okay? Um, and so, right, so they're not guaranteeing it for life. They say it may. I don't know what may means. Could be, you know, 20% will gain immunity, okay? So they do say it will be introduced. They say a mild attack, but what do you mean by a mild attack? Okay, uh, we would like to give your child this new form of prevention with the hope that it will afford protection. Okay, um, so I mean, so the consent form is talking about purpose. Okay, it's a little Being sketchy falsehood. on the risks. Um, a mild attack, uh, the benefits. Well, afford protection, maybe, maybe yes, maybe not. And they haven't mentioned specifically the side effects, that they will have vomiting, they will have... Okay, right, they need more risks. Okay. And they are giving false hope. Well, well false hope. Uh, what about cancer studies? Phase one cancer studies, false hope? Mm. No, it's not false hope. It's a, It's because uh, uh, um, if you actually have no hope, then yeah, one can say have no hope. So what's wrong with false hope? What's wrong with optimism? It's not false hope. How, why is it hope? How? I hope, think this hope, will hope uh, persuade is never, them. Something. Hope is never false. Um, well, let's. Yes, if, um, if you are not certain about something. Yes, well, uh, we, you're never certain with research. There's nothing guarantee. certain about research. All research. the benefits are potential in research. Mm. And, yeah, if a, if a person will say, if you tell a person there's a 5% chance you'll get a benefit, if the participant wants to say, I'm going to be that 5%, that's, that's their problem. Yes. I told you 5%, okay? Yes. If you want to be optimistic, 
okay? Uh, then that's, that's your problem, okay? I can't be responsible for how you hope, all right? Okay, yes. now let's, let's get to the important issue here um, about the, um, oh. all right, so the question is, was this the group to do it on? The children in the institution? That I think is the most important question. Um, was this, could they have, I mean, the children was being affected by this illness, the hepatitis in this institution. This is why the researchers were brought in. Help us with this problem. It's, it's all over the institution, okay? Uh, so, so the issue is, the issue about vulnerability is that if one could do it in a group, perform the research in a less vulnerable group. You should do it on that group. That's right. So what are the options here? Uh, I mean, it's a vulnerable group. You have parents. Uh, maybe the parents are a little sketchy. Okay. Uh, and, um, but we'll save that for another day. So what other group, the, uh, what other group would you suggest? Who would you do it on? Start with adults, I think. Okay, adults. good. Well, yeah, if you could do it in adults, then you do it in adults. Which adults would you and do? Men me mentally fit. Okay, but um, now, uh, so what I'm thinking about is, um, so I guess it would be similar to the, uh, what's happening at, now with the coronavirus, right? They're, they're asking human volunteers to be purposefully infected with the virus. Mm -hmm. Is that right? No. No? Why? Uh, because why we not? Said, because we said do no harm. Uh, that's, uh, well, uh, research uh, always involves harm. I know I showed you the slide that says do no harm, but uh, I think I also said in research, there's always risk, so you always want to minimize the risks. Mm. There is no such thing as a research study without harms. There's always potential harms. There's always risks. You want to minimize the risk. Okay. Um, I think these so, two are so so. Are are you saying don't do don't do any study that involves purposefully infecting people with the illness. Um, that may be a subject for a longer discussion, but that's what's being considered. And in fact, they've done human challenge studies uh, for years uh, under certain conditions. They've done uh, human challenge studies with cholera, with malaria. They've done human challenge studies with influenza virus. So human, they do do human challenge studies. Um, so, um, so the issue is, uh, could they have done it on, in another group? Which I think is a great question. Um, and animal studies? What's that? Animal studies? Animals? Before human, uh, well, I mean, Anim animal studies. Uh, well, the question is, um, um, you you could do um, animal studies looking at the safety of the vaccine, um, but animal studies will not be sufficient to determine the efficacy of the vaccine. 
Okay. When push comes to shove, you got to do it in humans. Maybe cell cultures of humans. What's that? Maybe cell cultures of humans. I'm sorry. Cell culture. Oh, cell cultures. At the end of the day, that will not predict the efficacy of the vaccine. Yeah, but they didn't mention the vaccine at all. They yes. Had to, 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 to see the symptoms. They didn't say that they're going to offer the cure for the infected children. The man said that they, they were they injected antibodies. Yeah, they're going yeah. to give them a globular. But that, I think, was a trial to discover that if it's going to work or not. They are not for sure, 100% sure. Well, that yeah, it's gonna uh, work. no one is ever percent sure. I think, I think uh, first they should minimize, minimize the risks and uh, try to have uh, like risk benefit ratio by uh, enhancing the benefits that the risks are optimal. So well, like, but, but, the, the, um, but the basic question is, I agree with all that, but the basic question is, could they, should they have done it in adults? All right. And, uh, and which I think is the most important question about this study with vulnerable groups, could they have done it in a less vulnerable group? And, um, the, um, uh, I think, on one hand, the short answer could have been yes. They could have done it in adults, okay? Um, the other thing is that um, could they have um, done it uh, a, a field experiment, meaning just give the gamma globulin to everyone in the institution and to see who comes down uh, with hepatitis without purposefully infecting people, uh, because that's the discussion now with the vaccine for coronavirus. Do, do you just um, give it the vaccine to people and observe their natural exposure to the vaccine without purposefully in, infecting them. But a lot of people saying that's gonna, that's gonna take a long time and we need a vaccine now. So the purpose of a human challenge study is to, is to have it uh, develop a vaccine sooner. Um, the, the other, uh, the uh, researcher, uh, Krugman um, said, well, um, we know in children, they only get a mild infection if we inject the vaccine, whereas adults, uh, they may have a stronger reaction against the vaccine. Um, and, and, uh, and that would be one reason why to do it in, to do it in children. They didn't do any pre-assessment test or survey on the children that they already occupying the school to know who's infected and who's not, who's carrier no, or they've not, done all that. who's having they hepatitis did, A or they, B. No, they did all that. They did all that. They did that all that. They did. They uh, they did the epidemiologic studies. Um, um, so uh, they did all that. And they determined that there was hepatitis A and hepatitis B. Um, so, well, let me um, uh, let me now continue to belabor the point. Um, uh, let me just say that this has been a very controversial study, for sure. Uh, it involved, um, you know, vulnerable children, and again, I think the important thing is whether they could have done it in adults. Um, and uh, uh, in, in, in a safe way. Uh, so what finally happened was that they 
you know, did develop a vaccine. Uh, the study proved to be very important, though just because the study gave important information does not necessarily justify the ethics. Uh, and, and I think the, um, uh, I mean, I, I think the, the big question is, could they have done it in adults? And, uh, and, and, and that's the major question. A lot of issues about the informed consent, no doubt about it. Uh, a lot of issues about whether all the risks were minimized. In, in terms of the informed consent, uh, the issue was uh, uh, whether that was offering a space in the institution we're going to hear more about this, uh, whether that was what we are called an undue inducement. I mean, they were giving a benefit to the children. It's just like when patients enroll in clinical trials to have access to medicines, and whether that's an undue inducement. Um, uh, we're talking about challenge studies in humans for coronavirus, uh, and they're offering the human, the healthy human volunteers for the human challenge studies. They're offering them five thousand dollars. Question is, is that an undue inducement? It's not exploitation. Rather, is that an undue inducement, meaning that the price. The, 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 um, the incentive is so much to the point where do the participants really understand what they're getting into? Now, some people say, um, and, and studies have shown that when you offer a participant a large amount of money to join a study, the participants actually say, oh, this is a lot of money. It must be risky. Um, and so the concern with undue inducement is whether the participant understand the risks of the study. And so that was one concern about the informed consent, whether that constituted an undue inducement that the parents will say yes to anything. Okay. And so that, that, that was a concern. Um, so uh, the biggest concern, and let me end on this point, the biggest concern was that this was a social issue, unsanitary institutions. And the biggest social problem was why, why did society allow these institutions to exist? unsanitary conditions. Uh, that, that is the larger concern was why did they allow such institutions to exist? Uh, that's, that's another question for a longer discussion. Yeah. Okay. Professor? Yes, one final thoughts. Yes. Uh, I mean, if, if we accepted uh, uh, the fact that the researchers have nothing to do that this facility is full and they will provide a new facility with better condition, so why would we blame them for the presence of the unsanitary facilities from the start? Do you get well, my point? I'm not saying, uh, no, a good question. I'm not blaming the investigators. <laughs> I'm blaming society. Yeah, but this has nothing to do with the researchers, right? Uh, right, it has nothing, absolutely. I'm, I'm just adding another point of view uh, that uh, 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 a lot of people were saying, um, uh, just like in, 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 in prisons, uh, a lot of people say prisons are in very bad conditions. Hmm. And to, to, the, to the point where, you know, after World War II, a lot of phase one studies were done on prisoners. Mm -hmm. 
In fact, drug companies had their phase one testing sites in the prisons. And they enrolled prisoners. And society thought that was okay. And then in the 60s and the 70s, uh, people in society realized the horrific conditions in the prisons. And they were saying, hey, you can't do research on prisoners. Of course they're going to say yes. Because when they say yes, they go to a separate facility. Uh, and so that that's almost like a, a separate situation. Uh, and finally, they told the drug companies to get take their phase one studies outside of the prisons. Okay. And so what... What did the drug companies do instead? They started to Animal do study. research on college students, <laughs> offering them a lot of money, okay? And so, and the drug companies also started, and let me say this last point, and I'll give you a break. The drug companies then started to say, we're going to start going to international countries to do our research. Mm. Okay? And uh, because we're going to find a lot of people who don't have access to drugs and will do research in the de uh, developing world. Excuse me, can I, yes. can I say uh, one other thing? Yes. Uh, I think Maha mentioned about this is not researchers' responsibility, but this is uh, one big part of research that we said in research, um, the integrity and, uh, um, uh, sorry, dignity and uh, respect to human beings should be, uh, um, he should increase and doing research in such a uh, condition is uh, eliminating that factor, right? Well, I, I, I mean, I agree with you. One, one could say that's part of responsible science, social responsibility, which actually was on that previous slide. Yes. And, and nobody, nobody even touched that. But, yes, it has, you are all, it has, no, you are all it, concerned about <laughs> honesty yes, and integrity. Yes. Nobody put down social responsibility. Yes, you are right. I, I, I've, I've, I've read the, this uh, article, what makes clinical research ethical, but the previous, previous uh, version, I don't know which one is the, when the recent one has been published, which added this. Uh, last item. Yeah, it was a couple of years after that. Community ah, okay. perspective. Ah, okay, okay. Right. Yeah. Um, so just uh, to to verify a point, so I didn't mean that it's not the responsibility. I mean, if we didn't blame the researchers for uh, uh, taking uh, people who accepted the participation in the study, so we should not blame them for the presence of the ancillary facility. Yeah, Did right. My so, point. Uh, right. I mean, it's I I believe it's it's responsibility for for science on and uh, right. like society uh, should be in a better way. But I I just want to to verify this point. Okay. Good. Great. Uh, so let's take a break.